Does working out immediately translate into a longer life? Let's use three examples of decades of document exercise and see what happens. Welcome to the Wellness Messiah podcast. I'm your host, Rimon. The first is obvious, bodybuilders. Most bodybuilders not only exercise frequently for 30 years, but almost all of them continue to exercise frequently after they retire. Yet, they don't live longer at all. This study from 2016, conducted by Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, they identified 1,578 professional male bodybuilders who compete from 1948 to 2014. They found, I'm quoting, mortality rate higher among bodybuilders. Bodybuilders have a mortality rate 34% higher than that of the age-matched U.S. male population. Of course, you would say most of them are using anabolic steroids, and you would be right, and these steroids reduce the lifespan. However, you would expect that this frequent exercise over decades will do something for the longevity. Maybe at least reaching the average lifespan of somebody who doesn't exercise at all. But it doesn't. Bodybuilders don't have any longevity benefits. Now let's go to a group with a verified testing for not taking steroids. Olympic athletes. This study from 2017 compared mortality rates between different types of Olympic athletes. The study is called Differences in Life Expectancy Between Olympic High Jumpers, Discus Throwers, Marathon, and 100-Meter Runners. I would expect marathon runners to live the longest. Regardless of their exercise, they have the lowest body weight and the lowest body fat both of which we know increase longevity. And based what we told about the best exercise for health, I would expect marathon runners to rank as number one. Let's see what they found in the study. I'm quoting, We identified a death rate for 336 athletes, 229 males and 100 plus females. Now, you know who lived the longest? Let's see in the graph. As you can see in this graph, the high jumpers had a significantly lower mortality than the rest of the groups. I continue to quote from the study. Survival was the greatest for high jumpers, 7.1 years for women and 3.7 years for men, and marathon runners, 4.7 years for men. They did not check mortality for female marathon runners. But what is more interesting is that as we progress with time, actually the high jumpers defeated all the other groups in longevity, both men and women. What does it mean? It would seem that different exercises over a long period of time affect longevity differently. And if you want to live longer and stay healthier, you need to target longevity with your exercise. So exercise doesn't translate automatically into longevity. It depends on what you do. Now, lastly, I want to present to you a very unscientific yet interesting case of lifelong documented exercise and the impact on longevity. I'm a European football fan, and every year the Football Association, they present the honor of the best player in the world. This is called the Ballon d'Or. And the first football player to receive this award is the English Stanley Matthews. It took place in 1953, and he received this award at the impressive age of 38. This is an age when 99% of players are already retired. How did he do that? Well, Stanley Matthews kept a very healthy lifestyle. He didn't do steroids and considered to be one of the fairest and honest players of his time. And Stanley Matthews maintained a vegetarian diet, a diet suggested by many longevity experts, including Dr. David Sinclair, as a longevity diet. So I would expect his diet alone, without exercise, should bring him at least 5 to 10 years in extra longevity. But what we like about his case is that he had been taking part in professional sports for 40 years and after. He had a documented frequent exercise routine. In fact, he was the oldest player to ever play in England's top football division at age 50. He played until he was 50, and he continued to exercise afterwards, frequently. And lastly, what I really like about his story is that he died of old age. 
as opposed to an unfortunate weak heart or collapsing liver. So his genome pool seems fine. How long did he live? He died at the year 2000, at the age of 85, beating indeed the average. But Stanley Matthews beat the average by only 5 years. 5 years is cool, but with his diet and lifelong exercise routine, I would expect more. Because listen, his diet alone could give him 5 extra years of life. Where are the longevity benefits from his frequent lifelong exercise? Especially believing what I was told about exercise and longevity. So what does it mean? To me, it means that exercise doesn't translate automatically into longevity. Even if you exercise every day, and even if you follow the high frequency recommended by many experts. Now, don't get me wrong, exercise is a terrific tool for longevity, but we must know how to use it right. Another clarification is about the study of uh, Olympic athletes. And the first thing I want to say about the study is that this study is not the best study for longevity in a sense that Olympic athletes do not maximize longevity benefits. They train to improve performance. You don't have their problem. Therefore, they are not a very good model for perfect exercise for longevity, but they are an excellent model to how the same exercise repetitively in a supervised control way can actually lead to different mortality results. So what I'm saying here is that the type of exercise does matter. Another caveat in this situation is that most of these athletes, Olympic athletes, they usually train for 20, 25 years, usually let's say from age 10 or 8 until 30, 35, somewhere in that range. And this means that we don't know their entire life's exercise routine, but we may know about a third of that, and that's good enough for our purposes. And the group is almost 400 athletes, so it's very interesting study to look at. However, it's not one-to-one -one translation to our situation. This is my point. Now, the big question. Based on my video, you would expect the sprinters to live the longest, right? Because they use high-intensity training. So why don't they live the longest? Why is it the high jumpers? It's a question that I receive. The first thing to remember here is that all Olympic athletes use the maximum frequency. I'm not a big fan of intense exercise and high frequency as you have seen in my video. So excess intensity in this situation could be problematic for the longevity and health. Even more so because of their high frequency. The 100 meter sprinters, they have a rather heavy physique. They're not as heavy as bodybuilders, but they are heavier than the rest of the athletes. And ideally, for longevity, we want efficient muscles. We don't want heavy muscles. One reason that we don't want heavy muscles is that you must eat excess protein to achieve this result. And this is going to activate mTOR insulin in others. And this is going to accelerate aging. In other words, it's impossible to have this amount of muscle mass, heavy muscle mass, without high protein diet. Now, let's compare sprinters with the high jumpers who live the longest. They have to be rather fit and lean to jump high. This suggests the best balance between weight and strength, per definition. I mean, otherwise they won't be able to jump as high. Another interesting distinction is sprinting for 100 meters all the time as a training is extremely intense for humans. It's too intense and it's going to cause unnecessary muscle damage. And remember, the frequency is already very high. So you couple that with a very intense exercise and this combination is not as good and healthy for longevity. Now let's think about the high jumpers. They sprint several meters, jump, and curve their body. That sounds like high intensity interval training. It's not too intense. And plus they must cover and engage all muscles. And they keep the ratio between strength to body weight pretty high. They are very strong for their weight and physical strength together with lower weight, is associated with longevity. And another interesting point that I did not mention in the video, I heard Ori Offmeckler from The Warrior Diet, and he also researched longevity and exercise connection. And he found that fast muscle fiber, they correlate with longevity, but not the super fast muscle fiber. Now, I could not find studies on this subject to corroborate what he said, but it makes sense to me from a metabolic perspective. Activating mainly the super fast muscle fiber without balancing it, it causes the muscles to burn only sugar, not fat. And this correlates negatively with aging. And 100 meter sprinters engage their super fast muscle fibers all the time. Instead, I think we need to focus more on the fast muscle twitch and maybe a bit on the super fast. 
I think we need to try to step down from the super fast, highest paced activities necessarily. And I was a bit amazed because in the video, I, I stated the words printing as the best, uh, one of the best longevity activities. And in my mind, I thought about sprinting, not in the sense of a hundred meter sprinter, but more in a healthier runner where we can run in a gradually increasing speeds for a few minutes and then stop resting. And then again, running in a increasing speeds for, and do that for three or four repetitions. So that's it really nothing beyond that. And I call this sprinting and it's, I, I was amiss to use that. So let's focus on doing things fast, not necessarily super fast. And if we do engage in super fast, which I think is fine, we only do that for a few seconds, you see? So if we, we run and we want to put the maximum stress, I think it's okay for a few seconds, uh, one, two, to increase the maximum speed. But I, I don't think that should be the, the main menu in our exercise routine. as a longevitist who cares about your lifelong health, you have a privilege. Bodybuilders, Olympic athletes, and professional sports athletes don't have this privilege. They all need to improve every day. They have to achieve gains every day. They have to push their body as hard as possible, but you don't have to. So you have the privilege of focusing on nourishing and supporting this recovery and repair system. So how do you exercise for longevity? Since 2007, I have collected for my clients, for myself, all the 11 exercise habits that target longevity. In an in-depth video with explanation of each of these 11 habits, you'll get the expansion. This will be published the next week. I suggest subscribing if you want to see them here on YouTube. Of course, if you're a member on Patreon, you can watch it right now. See you in the next video, where we explore and uncover the 11 habits of exercising for longevity.